All right, welcome everybody to another live stream. This time I have a unique pleasure of speaking with another indie developer, much like myself and like a lot of people out there who are trying to make a good game. Some of us are out there trying to make a million bucks. Some of us are just wanting to make a good game, make it come true, make our dreams come true of a game we've, we've always wanted to make, whatever it might be. And maybe you out there in the same shoes. Right now, guys, I have, I don't think I've ever done this before. I've talked to indie developers many times in my videos about how I think they can make their game better. Most often, my, I feel like my efforts to try to inspire indie developers to make their game better, goes, it feels like it goes unheard. But for the most part, most indie developers don't listen to my ideas. They don't implement any ideas and just leave their game, in my opinion, a mess. Um, I wish more indie developers would listen to the criticism and feedback they get, especially from people like myself who have been playing games all their life. Um, and right now, guys, I have the unique pleasure of speaking with the indie developer, Sam Galilee. Is that how you see it? It's uh, uh, Galilee. Galilee, okay. Hard to pronounce. Um, Galilee. All right, so Sam Galilee of Space Battle Arena, a game that just launched yesterday on Steam, uh, August 19th. And unfortunately, guys, while this is definitely my type of game, as you guys who have watched my 700 plus reviews uh, on YouTube over the years, you guys know that I typically like the Space Invader type of games. I made one myself. I made a couple, actually. Uh, it all started with Rock and Roll back in 2017 when I tried to make my own version of uh, my own idea of uh, Asteroids. And unfortunately, guys, not every game that I play is as much fun as it looks like it might be watching the trailer in this particular game i hate to tear down a brand new indie developer especially with their first game but learning from my own experience i know that with rock and roll my first negative review broke my heart it didn't come nearly this quickly after launch my first negative review didn't come until about six months after i launched my game but when i had a negative review tear apart my rock and roll game it hit me hard um, it shattered my, all the, uh, not all, all the pride, but a lot of the pride that I built up for launching my first game. It, uh, it hit me hard. And I got to say that I can understand all the indie developers out there that kind of fight back and want to do the copyright strikes to remove the videos and want to say, ah, stuff like, oh, your computer sucks. That's why you had a bad experience. Why don't you get it with something besides a potato computer? We've heard it all from indie developers who kind of lash back whenever they get a negative review, and that's probably way too common. Here we have an indie developer, Sam Galilli, uh, with Space Battle Arena, who has reached out to me and asked me to help him make his game better. Something that very rarely happens, so I want to go ahead and say thank you, Sam, not only for making your first game on Steam, but also not being so prideful or stubborn that you won't listen to another lifelong gamer who wants to help you. Of course, better. man. So let's I go ahead and... Uh want some help you know let's go ahead and uh yeah uh, that's what i'm here for and i think that if anybody else watches this video which i'll put up on youtube anybody comes into the live stream right now here over here on twitch uh maybe they can throw some suggestions for you as well now one thing i do notice is on the first comment on my review for the game uh first first of all i want to go ahead and say first of all you're not the worst of the worst okay even though i gave your game a what a one out of ten or something like that uh, i didn't give it a miss so I'm pretty hardcore on some of these games that I feel like are really just like asset flipping a kit that they buy in the Unity store or that really don't put a whole lot of effort. A lot of times I can feel lack of effort put into a game and those will make my miss videos, which stands for maggot infested stinky shit. I don't know if you've seen those over on my YouTube video. There's uh, over, I've only seen a few. Yeah, there's only over a hundred of those right now and they are plaguing Steam and I just feel like they're no effort uh, games that uh, really don't have a lot of inspiration, heart, or mainly effort put into the game. So thankfully, Space Battle Arena didn't fall into that. However, with your game, I will say that I feel honestly like myself. If I could, I don't, I don't, I've never programmed a game in Unity, so you're all new to that. Uh, you know, as far as me, I've used Game Maker to make all my games. So you're kind of doing something uh, a little bit different. Like I wouldn't be able to, you know, I could help you with some of the basic code, some basic code ideas, because I know it's essentially the same. But there's really just a couple of uh, things that I would encourage you to change about your game that i feel it would take it from a one out of ten probably up to an eight out of ten at least i think they're really simple 
really simple things. But before we actually get into that, uh, Sam, uh, my name is Zach, by the way. Uh, I, I know how you feel. I know where you're at. I know how hard it is to launch your first game on Steam and how much pressure it is and how uh, stressful it might be. Yeah, it's definitely an experience. Yeah. So I, I was there back in summer, but just three years ago, and I learned how to code myself. I never took a course. I never read a book. I just kind of learned by doing it. I kind of feel like you might be the same, but we're going to find out a little bit more about you right now, if you don't mind. You've uh, of course, man. agreed to do this. So first of all, let's ask you where you're from. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles. Grown up, lived here. Okay. All my life. All your life. So in California. Okay. Yeah. And are you in your, if you don't mind, you don't have to state your exact age, but are you, are you a teenager? Are you 30s? Um, so, I'm in high school. You're in high school. Okay. So yeah. I'm a very, very young and willing to take uh, feedback. So you're not like someone like myself who's grown up with these type of games and probably played at least a hundred, probably way well more than that of these yeah. type of games. So, uh, the most I did was uh, I used to like back in like uh, when I used to go bowling and uh, they used to have a few arcade machines and I played them a little bit, but I, I, they were never really like a big part of my life. Okay. So you're in high school in LA. Yeah. Yes. You, you got to have a, you got a deep voice, man. So you sound like you was older than <laughs> me. Yeah. I get that a lot. All right. So what inspired you to make your first game and of all games, why another space shooter? All right. So uh this might i I don't want to take us back too far but when i first started to learn unity uh, i actually Mm -hmm. took an online course okay because my dad was really just pushing me to do it and i wanted to do it too Mm -hmm. and i was experimenting with a lot of uh different like types of games and stuff but i was really drawn to like 2d games right and i experimented i I tried making a few you know of those like kind of not not the best mobile games um and for some reason just like this idea of like um kind of an arena shooter game okay just, like it just kept coming to me and uh one day my dad was just talking about like how much he loved uh like space invaders okay and those type of games that just like that just made me really want to uh, make it okay and also a big part of it was um uh like at the end of last school year i was just thinking about it and i was thinking about how you know maybe how i could like code in the um the enemy movements and like mm-hmm. the ai Okay. And uh, the way that I like came up with an idea was to use like graphs, and I thought that's something that um, colleges would probably look at and like be kind of impressed with. Okay. So I'd say about half of it was just from me wanting to actually make it and being interested in that, and half of it was um, trying to make something that will help me build a portfolio for uh, getting into a good college. Okay, that could make sense. Obviously, you want to have your first game on Steam be something that people can play. You can say, hey, go play my first game on Steam Space Battle Arena and have somebody be able to play and say, wow, this is actually really fun. Wow, I love this. I love the sound effects. I love the the retro feel of this game. I love the controls or whatever. That's what I'm here for, Sam. I'm here to try to help you. Never done this before, um, but uh, I I feel with myself, I started in 2D games as well because that's kind of what I grew up with as a kid. Yeah. And also it's a lot easier. Let's be real. You know, that get, is very true. To go in and try to make a 3D game like this, you're going to either have to create 3D assets yourself, uh, you know, and uh, or you're going to have to, you know, pay for them and buy them like yeah. assets or something like that. And if you buy the assets, one thing that's kind of kept me away from making 3D games is I didn't feel like I wanted to buy a bunch of 3D assets and then be called an asset flipper because people have seen those same zombie assets yeah. or whatever in 100 other games. That's exactly how I felt because yeah. I didn't. I didn't feel like trying to pay for 3D models and like mm-hmm. have someone make them specifically for me. And I just felt like, you know, I could go into Photoshop and just redo the pixel art very easily. Sure. Absolutely. So with this game here, a um, couple questions for you is how long, if you had to give us an estimate of how many hours do you think you spent developing Space Battle Arena total? All right. So I can give you actually a decently detailed, uh, like, breakdown on it. Okay. So I spent... Uh, three weeks in the middle or at the, near the end of June, um, mostly focusing on the actual mechanics of the game. So the first two weeks, I worked on like the character movements, the enemy movements, uh, the power ups, just like how the game would play. Okay. And then the second week, I actually coded in like uh, and try to balance the game. Okay. And then the, the third week, I started working on the more of the, the menu stuff. So getting like the main menu down, uh, options, pause menu, like that stuff. So it actually ran. Okay, and then what about Steam leaderboards? Was that something you put in that third week um, as well? Yes, I put that, because my plan was to put online in for the third week, but I mean, I took a day to just look at the APIs and stuff, and I just was like, it's going to take me way too long. I'd rather try and put more creative stuff into it rather mm-hmm. than the online aspect, because okay. I knew it wasn't 
I, like I knew I'm not going to have a lot of players, so it wouldn't even be like a, a good thing. In the game. Right. Yeah, that's the problem with I, I can tell you from experience that that's a problem with making a 2D game like this uh, with my own rock and roll and the games I've launched since. Uh, most people nowadays are what I call graphics for Sam. I mean, you know, most people want to play the 3D games and Skyrim and, you know, all the 3D games out there. The Witch that they don't want to play a 2D game. Most people see a 2D game and they just move right past it. And it's the world we live in. However, if you had, you know, launched your game back in 1985, it'd be a different story completely. Yeah. Um, awesome. and you're probably gonna just going to get main fans, people like me, older people like me, that get old enough to be your dad. Kind of like your dad yeah. kind of said, hey, man, I used to enjoy Space Invaders. So you mentioned yeah. your dad inspiring you to make Space Battle Arena. Uh, so, a, a little bit, yeah. He gave me the, he kind of gave me the idea of, of it. Okay. So what did... Let's let's go back there. I'm going to I'm not I didn't write all this down so I'm probably going to jump around randomly from question to question, but I'm going to try to ask these questions as I think of them. But because you mentioned your dad inspiring you to make this game, have you ever did you ever go in and play Space Invaders yourself? Oh yeah. That okay. that's what I was kind of talking about and like okay. the, when I used to go bowling and uh like to arcades, like I used to go when I was little. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really go too often now. Right. But yeah, I used to go and I I mean I would play. I wouldn't really know how to play i wouldn't really play well but like i still enjoyed it mm -hmm. and I, I thought it was fun okay um so playing space invaders and your dad inspired you to make this did you have your dad play space battle arena before you launched on steam or something? actually I, funny enough he hasn't played it yet which he is, hasn't played it yet okay yeah i i meant to send it to him yesterday but i got caught up in uh um, all the just craziness of releasing the game okay so the cool thing here is, Sam, I, you can do something with this game kind of like what I did with um, my Rock and Roll game. So if you go to my Rock and Roll game, which I launched three years ago, I have... So you could go back and you, you upload these builds to Steam, right? So let's say that I encourage you to change some mechanics in your game to what I think will make a better game. But let's just say that, you know, the pe other people that have played your game say, what are you listening to that Zach 994 He's an idiot. Your game was better before you listened to him. The cool thing is, is you can just go back and set your first yeah. build as a game and ignore everything else you've done since and leave it as is. Or you can kind of do what I've done and you can improve your game overall, what you believe is the improvements. And what I like to do now is after three years after I have uh, Rock and Roll up on Steam, I have it so you can just put in a code and it'll actually go back and re-download anybody that puts in that code. It'll go back and do that like launch build of Rock and Roll uh, or like a, a build six months into it. So yeah, I have like three or four different builds where you can go in. I know one was like a day three of development build where people can complain when it was really, you know, first in development. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of cool that people can just put in the code and kind of go see where, how it came along and how it progressed uh, over time. And it's certainly something that you can do with this game. Uh, the good thing is, is you can improve your game over time. I mean, I, I still, I, I am still putting, uh, you know, additional content into rock and roll. Like, for example, I think it was just about a year ago was the last time I really improved it, but I put in a whole new space creature uh, and added a new monster or boss to my rock and roll game, uh, even a year ago, like two, almost over two years after it launched. So that's the cool thing about it. I'm not saying you have to do that, but you know, if, if you are really inspired uh, to make this the best game you can be, you know, as you come up with new ideas or whatever, or a new boss idea, you know, maybe you yeah. want to make a turret or whatever, or some, a helper. Help adding, you uh, yeah. You there's, can... a, there's already a few like features that I'm going to try and add next week okay. uh, before my school starts. Sounds good. All right. So, Sam, look, I know you said in the comment where I, you know, under my review video where I broke down your your game pretty hard. And the first thing I want to say is listening to the negative feedback more than just people saying, yeah, this game is fine, is the best thing. You're a very yeah. wise young man because the negative feedback, my negative review is probably going to help your game way more than everybody that's saying, oh, yeah, it's a great. Um, yeah. And, and so you're a very wise young man to do that. So let's go ahead and play your game here. Oh, all right. And so I'll kind of play it live on my live stream here. And um, I see that it was made with Unity. Why did you choose Unity over? Um, cause over... It's because I took the class with it. So I, I, I'm already really familiar with it. OK. And it was really the only way I, I know how to like put, the, put together a game. Uh huh. It's just, okay. it's just like the easiest way for me. OK. Uh, I kind of know how to do everything. Is this kind of because Unity, you took a course in Unity? That course yeah, you, I took... you spoke of? OK. So in that course, I learned, it was like a few weeks, I learned how to use the basics of Unity, and then by myself, I learned the code, because that's just something I was interested in. And it just became pretty familiar for me. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is on Discord here, I'm going to go ahead and 
open up a live stream, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Yeah. I'm going to share the game with you, so you can see it live, so you're not watching a delay if you're watching my live stream. Yeah, the, the glitch that you had should be fixed, so now you should have the regular graphics and everything. Okay, so you should see the game live now. If you if you click on live game, you and you click on live game, you should see you know me, you, and then the live game. Yeah. So here, one thing I did like when I looked at the review, and I think you kind of saw it, is I did like that you had the challenges where you could go in and try to you know kill a thousand things and yeah. get get rewards and stuff like that. So I really like that idea to be put in your first game is really cool. I like the ability to be able to save up your coins and buy different ships and. And play with those so you've done a lot of work i can see that you put a lot of work in yeah. now there is a these these sh the shop and these ships they do offer improvements other than just looks right they do actually change um, the so that's actually one of the things i'm adding right now is, okay because originally they're just aesthetics for now because originally i wanted my game just to be like you know it doesn't it not not necessarily i don't want to say pay to win mm -hmm. but kind of like someone who's played and has like a few hours in the game is going to be getting much, much higher scores than someone who just started. Sure. That's kind of something I didn't want. But then um, from yesterday, at least three or four people, uh, you know, on Reddit or Discord or whatever, uh, were talking to me and they're like, hey, do you have upgrades, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm in the shop, I'm going to add upgrades as well. So it's okay. going to be the same as the power-ups, but just mm -hmm. permanent. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you could definitely do that. What I would probably do is you definitely, I like the style. You might want to change it around here. You might want to have something be like um, aesthetics or something like that. Have it say um, paint or something like that or style, yeah. ship style or something like that. So people understand that it's just aesthetics. And then yeah. maybe below that or something like that have uh, improvements or upgrades. Yeah, uh, I was where, thinking about having like different tabs and stuff. Right, like, yeah, there you go. Like uh, different tabs or something like that where you could have... Uh, have faster fire rate, faster movement, whatever. Yeah, that'd be cool. But before you actually worry too much about all that, I know that's kind of what people are want. Let's yeah. go and let's play the game. Yeah. So one of your big um, or complaints or like I want to say suggestion is mm -hmm. the WSD movement, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I I actually that was one of the things I was thinking about switching okay. first in development mm -hmm. was I was debating whether or not to have it be kind of like thrusters where. Mm -hmm. It's not where W goes, the uh, direction you're facing. It's more, it's more of just um, resistance. And right. So it's almost like you you actually have momentum because mm -hmm. that makes it a lot harder to dodge and stuff. Sure. Yeah. I ended up just doing WSD because I was like, all right, first I'll do this, and maybe if I have time, I'll implement the thrusters. Okay. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to experiment with that next week, just okay. see what I can do and see if I can make it uh, a good mechanic. Okay. So with with that, yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to actually put in a thrusting system. Okay, so there's, you might want to get yourself a notebook and paper just so you can write some of this stuff down. Of course, yeah, you can I'm always go back. And, yeah, right next to me. You can always go back and watch the live stream or whatever. Yeah. As far as ideas, so I like the you drew all these sprites with uh, you said Photoshop, um, or did you get some assets so or? My friend drew the original ones, but I did all the the skins and all that stuff. Okay. I like and what you I got here. Yeah. So I, I'm, I've coded, like, everything in this game I coded and made myself, except for a few things, which was um, the original sprites of most of the things, um, the sounds, because I, can't, I don't know how to make them. I found right. them and got them. Mm -hmm. And then also the explosions. Okay. Because those were, I, those were just an asset, because I needed to find a cool explosion, and I don't really know how to animate. Right. Okay. So, hmm. trying to okay so with this i mean with with so you i definitely think that for your style game for as many enemies as you have so like in my game rock and roll i wouldn't probably do that because that requires you to hit like a and d to rotate left and right where i do like your fast your must faster approach of spinning just with a mouse so that is something that i like and i actually use that kind of a similar kind of style with my um Fancy Bear game. It says on a space game that's 
completely different. Uh, but it looks kind of the same, but until you play it, you won't see the difference. But Fancy Beer kind of uses a scan run system as well, where your ship points where the where your cursor is, just because it's a lot faster, and it's a lot more action-oriented, and, uh, you know, it's faster response time. People aren't having to rotate around to which direction they want to go, and then thrust, etc. So, what I would definitely do if you're going to do that is I would seriously consider, Sam, with this game, changing the WASD completely, like maybe not even use WASD. Oh. I would simply make this an all mouse-driven control system. Oh, I like that idea. Okay, so what I would do, and if you play my game Fancy Beer, you'll kind of see how that works. So as you see, we are already using the mouse to control which direction we have. Now you have to use your hand, and you have to go in and use WASD to move. So instead of actually using WASD to move, what I, my suggestion here for your game would be, leave the pointing towards the mouse cursor. You already got that in. But instead of take out WASD altogether, and instead, if the player hits the right mouse button, right, they're going to move in whatever direction your ship is facing. So you already have a direction that your sprite is facing in Unity. Yeah. Right? So you already have that as a variable. So all yeah, you have to do is, is, is change the speed. So maybe the longer, what you could do is a couple of things here. You could do, and you might want to play with both of them. You can make it so the longer the player holds down the mouse button, the faster they move. Right? Or you could simply do, I think oh, this is what I did in Fancy Beer, the further away your mouse is from your ship, the faster they thrust when you hit the right mouse button. Yeah. So you might want to play with both of those and see which one works best for you. But tying this all to the mouse, I think, is going to make your game a lot more user friendly. It's going to, you know, it's, it's just going to feel a lot more um, user friendly and a lot more responsive, everything like that. I think people are going to like it a lot more. And making, making sure you're thrusting in the direction you're facing is just going to feel a lot more like a retro space game. Um, yeah, also, I, while you're doing that, change the space button that is fire right now to your left mouse button, obviously. Yeah. The left mouse button is going to be your fire button. Now you could, you, that also is going to free up your space button. So then maybe later on, you know, if you decide you want to put in a bomb or something, right? Where a bomb is going to blow up a whole bunch of enemies at once, a big explosion. Maybe you could add a bomb power up or something like that. And you could tie that to the space bar. Hey, hit space yeah. to fucking like launch a bomb or whatever. Um, so that would be something that I would advise you to do. And it shouldn't be that difficult, Sam, to... No, those are, those are things I'm already thinking of. Yeah. Not, I... the, not the mouse movement, but the bombs and like different types of like missiles and stuff. That's uh -huh. kind of what I've been thinking of. Excellent, yeah. So, so, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's pretty much, I think that's the biggest thing that I would have. Uh, too many enemies on the screen at once. I understand you want to make your game challenging, but yeah. if you do go to a thrusting system, it's going to be harder. You're going to want to have room, especially as big as your ship is. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to have to balance it. I would, I would strongly consider cutting down the size of your ship. I know you want it to be seen. But maybe instead of actually having it be so big, maybe cut it down to half that size so you have more room to maneuver, all right? And then maybe make your, maybe put a glowy outline around your ship or something like that that makes it obvious who the player is. They can look at this and say, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm obviously this guy. So I would basically probably cut down the size of this to 50 or 60% of its current size. Maybe put a glowy outline or something on there that's basically going to make it easy for the player to see who yeah. they are in all your enemies. Uh, I like the colors you've used. I like the red colors you've used. You've done, done a lot of stuff really good in here. You might want to consider changing the green here because green in these games like this, uh, green usually signifies good, and yellow and red and orange usually signify danger. So you might want to consider just changing the green on some of these enemies. You don't have to, but maybe change it to orange yeah, or yellow. I'll, I'll see. Yeah, so whatever you want. I mean, they don't look too bad as it is. I definitely like these. These purple ones definitely look like enemies. The red ones look very evil. Um, these ones, are, I don't think they're too confusing, but you might, might want to play with just making it a little bit, like maybe a purple or an orange or a yellow or something like that instead of a green. Uh, yeah, I like your power-ups. Uh, mm -hmm. Go oh, ahead. Thank you. Oh, well, I was saying, and to fix like the issue with the, a lot of enemies, because mm -hmm. I there were, like a lot of my friends were saying they loved uh, how like how many enemies there were. And then they thought they liked the challenge. And then I had a, a few people saying that it was too much. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, and some people were asking me for different types of waves. So I think one of the things I'm thinking of now, and I'm going to definitely try out, is a, is a different game mode that's like waves. So instead of having, instead of the, because um, right now the enemies are on a timer. Mm -hmm. And depending on what runs out first, either the timer, if you kill all of them, they'll, another wave will spawn. And so right. I'm thinking of making like more of a, more, more like, of a space invaders type game mm -hmm. where it's actual numbered waves um and they're actually hard coded in instead of being like kind of randomized right and i think that'll 
and also I'm gonna with that I'm gonna with the wave mode I think I'm gonna stick with the the spawn the the way they spawn in this mode. But mm -hmm. I think in the wave mode I'm gonna definitely try and like have them come in from the top and like the sides, mm -hmm. like you said, because I actually really do like that idea. Yeah. What do you have it? What do you have in place right now to prevent an enemy from? If you're going to have them just spawn in randomly anywhere, you want to definitely have checks in place, Sam, to make sure that they're not spawning in, not only on top of your ship, but to make sure they're not spawning in too close to your ship. You want, so you want to have a, you want yeah, to have it checked. Really, there is checks. So in right place. now, there's, there's there is a square around the, uh, around the player. Uh huh. Uh, so they won't spawn on the player. Okay. But so the way the way they, that I coded it is uh -huh. the closer to the middle you get, the more likely they are to spawn closer to you. Okay. So it kind of um it just kind of like incentivizes staying in the corners kind of and like staying around it rather than positioning yourself in the middle and firing away yeah because i mean in the middle is harder anyways but that's just the the way i figured out the spawning would just be the smoothest okay so you have right now when you're saying i move my ship around the you know when i move my ship there's like a bigger square around me that moves with my yeah ship. so if okay. you're so where where the ship is right now mm -hmm. they're only going to really spawn on like the right half of the screen and the in the bottom half of the screen. Oh, okay. So you pretty much have like a quarter of the screen where they're not going to spawn. Okay, gotcha. So it's about as big as a quarter of the screen. The, the box um, it might be a little bit bigger. I don't know how big it is like exactly. Okay. Um, so they but, won't they yeah. won't spawn too close to me. Okay, got yeah. it. So you're the only ones that if you're standing in the middle, the way so the way the the um like you said the enemies that you like the ones that go in an ellipse pattern. Mm -hmm. So those will spawn. They'll always spawn like in the very top. Because mm -hmm. the way it works is, um, just the way that the code works is, since they're moving, like the way I coded it, they're moving in an ellipse, and I mean it's just it's just weird. Like you can't have them spawn in a random area mm -hmm. and start from there. They just always spawn, uh, in the in their like, um, how do I say this? And they're just like trail, like where okay. they're gonna go. Have you thought about maybe lowering the number of enemies and having the enemies? fire at you like a certain type of enemy fire bullets at you um so originally i did actually have a lot less enemies okay but i found when i was testing that it was just so just way too easy okay so i but i think if i do i think with, with the wave one i'm going to cut down the enemies a lot and have a and just change some values and try and balance it out because mm -hmm. i think if i do the thrusters that'll definitely make the game a lot harder and it'll just and then I think when I cut down the enemies, it'll be like a good level of difficulty. Okay. So another thing too that I'm going to ask you, Sam, is I don't want you to put, and we may not be able to get to this right now, but even if you do all this, let's say you change it to 100% mouse control with thrusting, right mouse button, be your thrust. I think that would be a way better way to go. I think a lot more people are going to feel at home and have fun with your game if you change it to all mouse driven um, or mostly mouse driven, left mouse button, be your fire button, right mouse button, be your thrust. In whatever direction you're facing and then maybe yes if some keys like space or you know shift or whatever for different kinds maybe shift could be a laser ball maybe if you pick up a laser power up or whatever you could shoot a laser um, and space is a bomb or something like that if you end up having a bomb i think that would definitely yeah i'm definitely thinking of adding like kind of like um power ups that there are in uh just like the type of games where it's like if you press e it shoots off a missile and then it's like a five second cooldown or you know that type of stuff Sorry, can you just give me one second? Sure, no problem. We're we'll back. All right, sorry about that one. All right, so another thing I would suggest to you in this, and at least try this and play play around with it. So right now, if we if we launch your game. Sam, we see yep. that I can launch the game, and let's just imagine that I have thrusters in place, and I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. So another thing I would consider doing... Oh, sorry. That's... that's What, what just happened now? That's where they all spawn. That was, oh, that was okay. Like the space I was talking about. Okay. I think I'm going to try and change that, because a lot of my friends were running into that, and I, I didn't really think of it, because, you know, I, I, like, knew it, so I would automatically avoid it. Okay. But... Gotcha. Yeah, you want to make sure bugs like that aren't happening. Yeah, definitely yeah. left mouse button needs to be your fire button. Uh, for sure, rather than space. Um, I think that's just going to feel a lot more user-friendly. But let's, let's let's imagine here that I am thrusting around and I'm loving it and everything like that. One thing that... A um, couple things here that I think are going to make your game better as well. Right now, your ship can stop. And even in my own rock and roll, yes, you can stop. 
But I think one thing that's going to make your game way more fun, just looking at your game, and I'm thinking of simple changes that you could make. But So when you start the game, when you first start, you spawn in the middle or whatever, and you start, once you start, I would actually change the minimum speed to like whatever, one or two or whatever. You're going to have to play around with it. Obviously, you need to be able to move faster if you're thrusting or whatever. But I'm thinking that maybe you should make it so you, you can't stop. This will allow you to do away with some of the enemies, right? It's going to make it a lot more fun. Make it so you absolutely cannot stop. I think that's my suggestion for this game. Not only would I fight, tie fire button to left mouse, right mouse button to thrust, but I would also make it so that you have to continue moving. And if you wonder why I'm going this route, because there are already several games on Steam that are a hell of a lot of fun that I've scored insanely high games that have graphics very similar to yours like bit blaster xl and a couple more recently that are that are basically taking the idea of that um and maybe you want to continue to make it so you completely stop but i think that is definitely good if you're looking for adding challenge rather than making so many enemies on the screen making it so you cannot stop and you're always moving is going to be something that would make your game more challenging and I think would be a better idea than just having to so say you can stop and having so many enemies on the screen. So something definitely for you to play with. And that's really doesn't require a whole lot. Once you initially start, just make the minimum speed, you know, whatever that value is. Yeah, uh, I really like that idea. I think that I think that can make your game a lot more fun. Um, you already have you're already going to have the ability to turn really quickly with this kind of movement and just making it so you cannot stop. You have no breaks and you can simply explain that. Hey, in space, you don't have any breaks. Or maybe you could say yeah. in your head up, hey, you you're in space and you've lost, you know, you've lost the ability to, to break. Um, obviously, you can slow down by not thrusting it will allow you to reach that minimum speed. So basically every second that you're not thrusting to have your speed. And when you do this in the code, it's going to be your speed is reducing like point zero 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 two or something like that. It's going to have a lot of yeah. zero. Um, that way it doesn't happen too quickly. You don't want it to ha you want it to feel like your gravity is pulling you in space. So it's going to be a real, real small number that's happening every, you know, every yeah. whatever step of your game. I definitely will experiment with that. I would try that. I think that would be the way to go with your game, Sam. Yeah. Um, make it so you cannot stop. And if you if you doubt me, go buy Bit Blaster XL. It's an outstanding uh, uh, game. In fact, I will I will show you. I have a YouTube video where I compared like five or seven of these games like this where you can't stop uh they've all kind of taken off each other and they are a hell of a lot of fun a lot of these games are a hell of a lot of fun and you could kind of tie yours into you know with those kind of games and i think that if you put a little bit of work into it i think you could make this a hell of a lot of fun game i think you have a great foundation for a game like i said i think it just may, needs some some you know changes to the the control system and your firing and stuff like that idle the mouse and you know maybe just a couple of keys for different power-ups and i think you're gonna yeah i'm definitely going to be ten times better. with all that all that stuff next week yeah absolutely and I look forward to actually playing your game as you make these changes. And if you want to, you know, if you're making changes and you say, hey, Zach, I got another build up here. Go try it out, please. That's what you think. I'll definitely be giving you my feedback, making right. more video content for you and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, when you play your when you have your dad play this game, that's what I want for you more than anything, Sam, is I want your dad to play this game. Somebody who grew up on Space, space Invaders. I want your dad to say, son, God damn, you made a hell of a fun game. This is better than I remember at, uh, Space Invaders being right. Um, cool. rather, rather than your dad maybe playing it and saying, son, why did you, why are you doing this? Why are you making WSD? This is weird. You know, or whatever. Um, so yeah. I, I would love to see you impress your father. Um, not only as, you know, Thank other, you. other people that might play your game, but yeah, I mean, if we, if we get out of this game here, what? so I don't know if you, this would be, he's made a new one. Actually, he's made a newer one. Uh, Bit Blaster. I would grab his newer one because it's even better. Blaster. I think it's Super Bit Blaster XL. I don't know. But as you can see, Bit Blaster XL is a 99 cent game. And if you look at this, 97% of his uh, reviews are positive. And look, the graphics yeah. look the graphics look a lot like yours, but you cannot stop. So you are this. Uh, you just can't move, and it's so much fun. It's so addicting, dude. That's why this game has such high Whoa. reviews. That and, looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I would definitely encourage you to go buy this game. Uh, try it out. As you can see, I reviewed this game, and I gave it a positive review initially. Um, in fact, I think I probably gave it like a 97% or something crazy uh, back when I played it. And, uh, yep, 90%. But he says he's since made um, Super Bloodbuster XL. I believe he launched this like a few years ago. So this was his first game. This is Nicker Vision Studios' first game. 
And since then, he's made some killer games. By, probably my favorite game by him is Ding Dong XL. As you can see, he makes a lot of these 99 cent games. Yeah. And Ding Dong XL, even though it only has 363 reviews, I would definitely pick this one up as well. Maybe just pick up his whole bundle. You can pick up his whole bundle for like five bucks or something and play all his games. But this is probably my favorite game by him. Bit Blaster XL was my favorite until this game came out. And then this game is just so simple that it's just brilliant. Yeah. All you're doing, all you're doing is hitting one button to move this ball up and down and just trying to keep it from crashing into these obstacles. So it's just kind of like the timing. And you try to get every time you do, you go up one by one, one. But this game is incredibly um, addicting. And as you see, you don't have to have good graphics to have. Another thing that sets his games apart is he has fantastic music as well in the background. But yeah, I would just pick up his whole freaking bundle, Nickerbin Studios. I love this dude. He's an indie I'll developer. And, look at it. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think it's Super Bit Blaster XL. Yeah. It is. Super Bit. Yeah. This one, charge, he charges a little bit more money for. So is this one just like a reskin or what? Yeah, it's kind of an upgrade over his one he launched back in 2016. Uh, he had so much success, as you saw, over what, yeah. almost 6,000 reviews or whatever. You know he's made some money. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if it, I figured based on my games and other games that I've seen, at most, one in 50 people leave a review. So if that dude had 6,000 reviews, you multiply that by 50 to see how many actual sales he probably had on Steam, that's 300,000. That makes me jealous right there. Yeah, this dude's... This... Nicker Vision Studios is probably a millionaire from his, like, handful of games he's made on Steam at 99 cents. Um, That's yeah. pretty amazing. So, yeah, if you think you can't make it big with simple games like this, you definitely can. Things like music are, are important. Definitely your controls. What kind of controls are you using are important. Um, simplicity, keeping it as simple as... That's why I say tie your game to just the mouse for the most part. Um, yeah. don't try to get it over your head. I think even me with rock and roll, I, I think it's just way too complicated. I tried to make my game way too complicated. I think my game's a fun game. I would say that my game, but I'm biased. I'm going to say my game's probably better than a lot of these more simple games, but a lot of people are going to, you know, gravitate towards something a lot more simple. But in yeah. Bitblaster, both of these games, you cannot stop. And that's where the challenge really comes in. As you can see, he has a lot of different enemies, um, you know, in his game, he has a lot of different stuff going on here, but with the without the ability to stop. And of course, with that, he has a lot of different power ups that you could pick up that change how you're firing, how quickly you're firing, um, and things like that. But as you can see, you just can't stop, and it gets pretty crazy. Yeah. It's a lot of addictive fun. So, I would probably play the Super Bit Blaster XL. And with your game, I would strive with where I see your game at now. You can definitely make a game that's right in the same kind of addictiveness and stuff like that. I would strive to make your game not exactly Bit Blaster XL, but make your game a lot like it with your own yeah. twist. So with that, Sam, I'm going to ask you, what is going to set your game apart from all the other space shooters out there, such as Bit Blaster XL and the you know probably ten games that have copied Bit Blaster XL since then, um, and some of them are really good. But what, uh, if you want to see my review, I think I did a 45 minute review or hour long video where I compared like five or six of these games all together and put them up against each other. I did that about a year ago. Um, and I, I could put a bunch of these games like, just like the last Fatale, where, you know, shooters where you couldn't stop. And I tried to find the best of the best. And there was a couple other that I really liked as well. And I scored them all. Yeah. But, um, what is going to set your game apart? I feel like you need something, Sam, and this is something you're probably not going to be able to answer tonight, but put a lot of thought into something um, that is going to set your game apart. So what, when, I, when I show you this, what I want to show you is kind of where I had with, when I, well, with Rock and Roll. Okay? So with Rock and Roll, right, this game, I played the original Asteroids game, and I wanted to make, I've always wanted to make a game like Asteroids, but when I started thinking about this, I started developing it, I realized that Asteroids had a way to, there were so many Asteroids on the screen sometimes that you just couldn't avoid dying. And so they made a hyperspace button, where if you hit the hyperspace button, um, you would teleport to a random part on the screen, right? And sometimes you would randomly teleport right on top of an asteroid and die, and sometimes you would, you know, get away with it and be in a random part of the screen. So there's always that risk of death, you know, spawning on top of an asteroid and dying if you use hyperspace. But I didn't like that. I wanted something a little more complex. So that's when I came up with Rock and Roll, Rock being the asteroid and Roll being your special attack, kind of like your hyperspace. And you have to collect these as power-ups or you start with so many of them. And as you see right there, in that right there, Rock and Roll. So you can see me using oh, a spiral yeah. attack there. 
And that was my own twist on my space game. Obviously, my space game has a lot of other stuff that I added, you know, like the ability to get minerals from the asteroids and use the minerals to get upgrades and stuff like that. But I will give you a key after the stream so you can go and play my own rock and roll and see kind of, you know, uh, yeah. see how I did my game if you want to play my game. You're welcome to leave a review, leave me a negative review, whatever it is you want to do. But yeah, I mean, you can see right here on the forums, I did put in here, right here, yeah, play the early versions of rock and roll. And right here, I kind of show you how to go in and do that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a posted forum where I go in and show you how to play uh, these different versions. So if you want to play the early access build or the third day of development build, I kind of show you how to you just pull up that forum and it'll show you exactly what code to put in and how to do that. Yeah. Uh, is it there? So you can see right there, there was my early development game of Rock and Roll. They weren't colored. They were, see the, all the different fonts up here. It was a mess. Yeah. Dude, um, I'll, I'll, I will definitely do everything you're saying right now because yeah. this is just probably the most valuable feedback I've gotten. And yeah, I mean, when I first, my game was getting positive reviews from a lot of people that knew me and stuff like that. But it wasn't until my game launched in July of 2017. And as you can see, this review right here that came in January of 2018, like I said, about six months after I launched my game, this was my first negative review. This was the one that hit me hard, mainly because... It wasn't just saying this game is shit, this game sucks. This guy was actually saying stuff like, you know, oh my god, there's so many different fonts, there's so many different, you know, different things here that are problems with the game or whatever. And uh, I responded to his game, I tried to answer professionally, and I said, hey, I'm making these changes. Uh, thanked him for his review. But his negative review, if it never would have came, it probably wouldn't be near as good as it is today. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at my game here... I don't know where all the updates are, but there's a shitload of updates. That's why they're not showing up. But anyway, yeah, I have like a hundred and something updates for this game over the years. And um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you you can see that you know you could definitely uh, improve your your game a lot over the day. I mean, you could do just endless updates to it as much as here's my big monster that I created yeah, last October. Uh, and as, as Sloth, and as you, you know, as you, as you develop your game, you know, like this is something that, that I wish I would have came up with right at the start was as Sloth. Uh, and because what I'm, what I, what I did in my game, and if you go in and play my game, what I did is I, right from the start, I didn't want somebody to, uh, my God. So I didn't want somebody to be able to take their ship and just park in the middle of the, the screen like i'd seen in so many other space games right i didn't yeah. want somebody to just be able to park in some spot and just fire away with no challenge just continue to fire away so i didn't want somebody to be able to rotate as freely as what you're going to have in your game you know be able to point your cursor where it's right yeah i wanted you to have to rotate a and d to move to rotate left and right or could, you know you could use a controller you could rotate as well but i wanted you to I, I made your rotation speed initially i made your rotation speed really slow so if you're parked and you're not moving, I made your rotation be, speed be really freaking slow. And I basically said when I launched the game, I was like, if you want to rotate faster, you need to move. Because I wanted people to move around, right? Because I thought that's where the fun would be, trying to move around, trying to thrust around and dodge stuff. So my idea was to make it so that if you moved, you rotated faster. But people didn't do that. People didn't want to move around they would they wanted to camp in one spot and they didn't really understand you know hey you need to move to rotate faster now i do have upgrades that you could buy so you can rotate your ship faster but it was frustrating to people yeah so it didn't come to me until last october when i had this idea for asloth and basically i created asloth where the border here the cheetah will turn this shows your speed your, your speed around so this will show your speed here of your ship your average speed and if you're green then you have no thread of Asloth forming. But if it's red, it'll actually come up on the screen and it'll say, speed up, you need to get moving, stuff like that. Uh -huh. And so, so it was an idea that if you didn't keep your average speed at a certain threshold, then all the rocks would form into this Asloth super beast mode that would kick your ass. Basically, it has all kinds of you know power attacks, shot attacks, stuff like that. He'll use his tongue, he'll use everything. So if you, yeah, if you watch the trailer or whatever, uh, is, I think I can't remember if this is it or what. No, that's my main trailer. 
Yeah, this is it, I think. But as you see, I have a lot of different boss modes and stuff like that. Yeah. It's but... Yeah, and it has a lot of different things to it that I've added over time, is what I'm saying. So you may not come up with everything you want to make your game great right away. It may be a year from now or two years from now where you have a great idea for something you wish you could have thought of two years ago and you decide to add that to your game and it makes it better. So what I'm saying is don't... I guess what I'm trying to encourage you, Sam, is don't give up, right, oh, on your I'm, game. Dude, I'm definitely not. Yeah, this is your so first good. game on Steam. Make this be your baby. Make this be something that you yeah. are really passionate about, uh, you can make your dad proud with or whatever. So yeah, let really ideas cool, just... Like you may not come up with the greatest ideas, you know, even with me helping and stuff like that, you may not be happy with it. Or what I'm saying is it, let it be something that improves over time as you get more feedback from people like myself and other people that play your game. And as you have ideas yourself, and also as you grow as a developer. So I can promise you one thing is the more games you make, the more stuff you create, the more you work on your game, uh, Space Battle Arena, the better you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, as an indie developer, the better you're gonna you're, you're gonna find it easier to come up with these these little things that were so hard that took you hours to change. Now, you know, a year from now, you might be able to do it. I can't believe that took me six hours. You know, a year ago, now I can yeah. do the same thing in fifteen minutes or whatever. Um, you're gonna find out shortcuts and ways to to make things easier for you and uh, make better games quicker uh, as you do it. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully yeah. you'll be able to take some of these ideas and implement them in the game. I look forward to seeing your game as it develops and as it grows and as you implement some of my ideas, uh, like the all, for the most part, the all mouse-driven control, except for maybe a couple buttons for your bombs or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely, definitely at least oh, test I'm that non-ability to stop. That way you don't have to worry about yeah, creating I'm as lot for that. your game to keep people moving. Because my game, you can stop, but if you do, you're going to be risking Aslov coming. Yeah. My game's really complex. I don't know if you want to go to that pure amount of code. I mean, Rock and Roll, just so you know, Rock and Roll has like 45,000 lines of code. Jeez, man. Yeah, yeah I, I'm definitely going to be trying out a bunch of different stuff and just seeing what yeah, happens, you know? Yeah, exactly. Sam, I look forward to it. If you ever want to talk to me again, uh, you know, or you want me to play test your game while you're watching live and you're explaining stuff, I'll be more than happy to do that with you. I'll be happy, more than happy to go ahead and make your game better. I would love to see you make your game one of the best-selling, you know, uh, retro space shooters on. So All right. let me. I'll give you again. I'll give you a code to my rock and roll so you can go play that. So you can see kind of how my game. I would encourage you with my key to go back and put in those codes that I have a form about. I don't look where my code was from. My game was from the third day of development. Was the code you could do launch day and so forth and see where it's at now, and it's kind of see how my game grew and improved over the over time, and maybe that'll help inspire you to see that hey, your game can only get better with time and the more effort you put into it and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any further things you want to say, or anybody you, anything you want to say to anybody that plays your game, or not really? Just um, expect to see a bunch of updates soon and new features and stuff. Okay. Don't, uh, I, I know it's exciting. It's, it, you know, you've already come so far. I mean, you, you've come further right now than most people that ever think about making a game come, but just by launching your game on Steam, paying the $100, uh, you know, putting it in a situation where it is launchable, where it doesn't crash, uh, you've come further than probably 95% of people that, you know, start working on a game ever come. So you're already in that 5%, you know, that probably, is only dream about making a game but you've made it happen and you've made it happen at a very young age so you have a lot of time left in your life to improve your skills as an indie developer or make some great games and i look forward to seeing not only what you do with space battle arena to see what your next game is on thank you it's been a pleasure talking to you uh, don't give up and if you never if you ever need further more inspiration or need help or anything like that don't don't be afraid to reach out to me because uh i played was in your shoes just a couple years ago so all right. All right. Well, thank you. Man. I really you, appreciate it. You bet. Thanks so much for uh, thanks so much for your time tonight, and uh, I look forward to seeing where you go. Peace. Of course. You bet. Take care. Man. Take care.